Retroid Pocket 3 Review The Retroid Pocket 3 has almost the same specs as the 2 Plus, using a Unisoc D310 processor and 2 GBS of RAM. You can also upgrade it to 3 GBS. This will provide a minor increase in power, but nothing too significant. When it comes to design, Go Retroid opted for a simple look. A lot of handhelds cram too many buttons onto their face which can make the device look busy. But the Retroid Pocket 3 went against this trend and it fits perfectly with my minimalistic style. It wasn't really an issue for me but if you prefer a softer touch then this could be a problem for you. It was fine with me how the buttons were out of the box, but that's just my opinion. Holding the Pocket 3 fits just right for adult hands, with its large 4.7 display being very impressive. The 16 to 9 screen allows for more immersive PlayStation Portable emulation, as well as a better gaming experience on apps and PS5 remote play on smaller devices. This is one of the main benefits of picking it instead of 2 Plus. The 16 to 9 HD screen brings numerous advantages, especially for someone who is new to the scene and accustomed to Android. The Pocket 3 offers great portability with its thinness, comfort with its flared shoulder buttons, and a more modern look with its small bezels. This beautiful and comfortable handheld has the perfect size screen for playing retro games on the go. Its size is suitable for people with poor eyesight and can be easily carried with you on long trips. The volume, on off, home, and start select buttons have been nicely tucked away but are still visible. It was enjoyable to play on, and due to its brightness, it was possible to experience gameplay outdoors in direct sunlight with no issues. Changing topics, the DMG Colored Pocket 3 is great for Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance you won't experience any issues while playing, and it's my favorite. Just like the Pocket 2 Plus, and 64 runs smoothly on this, however, you'll need to do some button mapping for it to run at its native speed and resolution. Thanks to its easy emulation, PlayStation 1 runs very smoothly. Moving on to larger consoles, tried out Dreamcast and was quite impressed at its performance running about 90% of Dreamcast games, Crazy Taxi being my favorite. It's amazing how you can now experience these Dreamcast games on this 100 pounds handheld device, it's incredible. On the other hand, despite being a budget handheld, PSP performs relatively well in comparison. Most of the games for this console should run without much difficulty but large titles like God of War may experience some minute issues such as slowdown and audio stuttering. With small tweaks, you can make the performance acceptable but not great. GameCube and above is not worth the effort, since you get poor performance and short battery life. Moonlight streaming from a PC was possible, but even a potato could do it. Despite the cramped conditions and hard to read small text on particular games, with a 16 to 9 display and 7 hours of battery life, features that weren't possible before are now accessible. However, if you already own a 2 Plus model, advise against spending extra cash on another handheld. With the current economic situation and the many upcoming devices being released this year, my suggestion is to wait if you have the 2 Plus. Go Retroid is demonstrating to the competition what can be done with budget-friendly handheld gaming at its best, 